Hi, and welcome to VFX Tutors. I'm Josh, and in this tutorial, we'll be building Rough Set Geo from some set measurements taken from our previous shot. I just want to say thank you for all your support, and thank you to all my patrons. All your support has really helped me allow to create more content for you. And if you want to support my Patreon, the link is in the description. In this tutorial, we'll be continuing the previous tutorials by creating the set geo to make a single frame lineup for our shot. So I have my sword file open from my previous tutorial from where I created this sword from a scan. You can download this sword in the description or it's free from my Patreon page. So what we're going to do is we're just going to build a rough set geo from some measurements that I took and this is something that's usually that like when you're working in industry, this is probably going to happen a lot. You're going to get promised these amazing uh, measurements and stuff like that. And you're going to build set geo, and you're probably going to end up with something like this. And you're just going to get some sort of really rough, awful drawings of just some rough positions and stuff. But you can get some pretty good stuff from it. Um, and like I said, this is only a single frame, but this is going to help us get our scene scale quite nicely. So all we're going to do is just build this room very basic we've got our measurements so like we can see that it's 335 centimeters deep 300 centimeters wide and 247 centimeters high and also these lamps are marked out as 75 centimeter from the back and 178 centimeters high we also have the width of the green screen to clip to clip and also the distance from the arm of the sofa to the back of the room. So this is going to be a pretty quick tutorial, this is not going to be super complicated. We're just going to model this very basic room from these measurements. So I'm just going to pull this to the side. So you should have this be able to download this in the data package. So I'm just going to pull this to the side. And I'm just going to start off with making a cube because the room is basically a cube. And that's in the sword so I'm just going to hide the sword. We're actually upside down right now. So I'm just going to select my cube. And I'm just going to build this cube from the basic measurements of the, the depth, width, and height. So that's 335, 300, and 247. So I'm just going to go to my tribute editor. Like I say, you can do this in any 3D software. You don't have to do this. You can do this in Maya, Blender, anything you've, you're really using. I just use my because it's just what I've used for years. So I'm going to start off with my width. That's 300 centimeters. So my units are in centimeters, but you always want to make sure that you check that you're in the same units. So I'm in centimeters, but you might be in any one of these, probably either centimeters or meters. Very unlikely you're going to be an inch for a yard, but you never know. It's worth to check. So I'm just going to close that. So I've got my 300 centimeters width. Then I go for my height, which is 247 centimeters. And my depth is 335. So now you can see we've got this very basic room. So I'm just going to go to my modeling toolkit and select faces. I'm just going to delete one of the faces because I don't need it. And as you can see, we've got a basic room. But we want to make sure that we are got our normals facing the right way as well. Because at the moment they're facing outwards. So we can go to mesh display and reverse. So now our normals are facing inwards. And we can unhide our prop sword and just have a look in, in regards to like the size of the room. That looks fairly reasonable. I don't know why that's upside down. It's uh, It doesn't particularly matter, but it's nice to see it the right way up. So we've now built this incredibly complex room. <laughs> we've got the all the sizes correct. So what we can do now is sort of place rough positions where these lamps are, because this is going to help us with our lineup. So this, these are 175 centimeters from the back, uh, 172 high and 75 centimeters from the back of the wall. So let me just pull this to the side. So what I can do, I can just go, I can either, 
I can either create a model and make a sometimes you can just put the, the values in here so let's go height 172 so that's 172 high and depth 75 so now we know that's if we press insert snap our uh, pivot point to the corner then we just hold V and snap to the corner let's turn our wireframe on we now know that that is the center of this circle so that's that's just a really simple way it's not the like there are many ways to measure something but if you just need something really quick and just not in the way and something very you can just delete straight away after this is just the quickest way to do it, I find sometimes. So now you can create a cylinder and I'm just gonna snap it to the corner. Let's change its size if I guess it it's a bit big. Oh, let's change this to 90. If you press F to center on it, and we've got. A, a very rough placement because uh, I we don't have the measurement of the size of the actual radius of it so yeah now we've got a rough placement of where that could possibly be another way we can do it is using our measurement tools which if you're doing shots like uh, building sets like this and you you need all these measurements you need to be able to see you can use your measurement tools so just going to create create and you have your measure tools and you have your distance tool so i'm just going to select my distance tool and you can hold v and it will snap to a point and because we don't have a point here i'm going to snap it to this point here and you can see it now gives us our, so it gives us sort of like a view of where our distance is and it gives us our size. And we can see that it's 335 here and it's exactly the same as our measurements on the side. So now what we need to do is adjust this to 172 centimeters. So I'm going to select this. Are my locators turned off? They are. So you should have some locators there. And you can just move this down to. 100 uh, to 75 and that's that's practically 75 in fact let's do it on the other wall so let's delete that I don't know why I did it on that wall so our other one is so we just select our measurement tools hold V And you can just select there, but then if you don't snap it to things, it kind of puts it randomly in space. So that's why I kind of like to hold V, snap it to points. Because then at least you know it's exactly on that sort of line of axis. So now I'm just going to select that locator, slide it down to 75. And that's pretty close. And now we can do the same. So now we've got that measurement. You can sort of see it there. That is giving us our sort of diagram as well. And I'll always say centered on the screen as well. So, so now we can do the same thing for the height. So on this one it was 178. So I'm just going to hold V on the corner. Then snap again here. So I can just select that locator. I'm going to bring it up to 178. So now we have the height. And because we have these locators, we can, let's duplicate our cylinder by pressing Ctrl D. And I'm just going to snap it to that locator. So now I know that's at 178. Hold V and snap it in one direction in 
just holding because if you hold the center you can move it around but you can just select the the axis so I'm just holding V selecting one axis and snapping it to that vertice so now I know that that's at 178 centimeters high at 75 out so you can use many different methods the the distance tool is really useful because it can show you the actual distances and stay on your screen but if you use loads and loads it can become quite cluttered so we've done two of those let's just delete those what else have we got we've got probably should have got the height for this as well that's 117 centimeters from the back of the wall so let's just make a basic cube and 117 and we probably could have done with more measurements on this but um you can probably start to guess that after a while if you have loads and loads of measurements it starts to get very cluttered and very uh can be very confusing but let's take a like I say this is only a rough set geo so we can use the sort of picture to roughly guesstimate size of things Cool. So I think that's pretty like it's super basic, but you can make this once we've got our single frame lineup, we can make it way better. We just want to get it so we've got the right sort of uh, scale of our scene. So we can we can sort of maybe tidy make this a little bit better because obviously at the top corners we've got these edge bits and it might be difficult to sort of match. So that's actually. Fact, let's leave it let's just leave it as, as basic as possible we've got everything we need we've got the side walls because we don't actually see that much in the in the shot anyway so what we can do let's make one last thing let's make this very rough green screen so we only have the width and not the height um, there we go. So the width is two oh three. Let's just rotate that ninety degrees. It's probably not exactly ninety degrees, but we know it's kind of just roughly in front of the sofa a bit. So. And let's just roughly scale it up because we don't know the height, but we can give it a rough guess. But as long as we got the accurate width, so don't worry too much about that. Let's say this is only basic. We can tidy this up afterwards. So we've now created this really rough, quite horrible looking geometry. Oh, let's. Uh, hide that so now our next step would just be to bring this into 3d equalizer and do a single frame lineup and this should give us a really good start with getting our camera scale correct and our position and it just means that our object track is going to work really well because we're going to be manually manually object tracking this in Maya so let's just group this we'll just call this rough set geo for now because we can make this look much nicer later just for the sake of your showreels and stuff and let's go edit delete by type history and freeze all the transformations and now let's export this 
So let's select all our geo. Don't worry about the names, we can do that later. I think we've got selection highlighting off. So let's go file, export selection. Let's go to our folder. Let's make a new folder, set geo. We'll just call this room set geo v01. And cool, we're pretty much done now. So our next step is to take this into 3D Equalizer and do our single frame lineup and get it all nice. And then export out our undistorted plates and lens distortion stuff. So I know it's been a quick and very basic tutorial of um, just modeling stuff from this. It's nothing special. Um, but it might be useful to some people. Um, but yeah, it's a nice, nice quick tutorial. But um, yeah, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, hit that like button and subscribe for more like this.